Hello, I'm uh, Wes Beebe, um, RSI 1995, um, and I uh, currently work at Cisco Systems, and I'm going to be talking about building the Internet of the future. Um, some of the driving, I'll be talking about some of the driving factors of the new Internet, why, we, why we're building a new Internet, um, basically basic information about how the structure of the Internet. Um, the new idea is the distributed access architecture, and uh, uh, we're also doing access convergence, and I'll describe that. And uh, how do we accomplish all of our objectives when, when we're trying uh, with this new DAA? So some of the driving factors are cost. Um, think about if you have your cell phone bill, your TV bill, your um, you know, internet from your cable modem, your phone, landline phone bill, you know, all of these bills add up. And uh, you, know, you could easily spend $2,000 a year on basically internet access. Yes, there's content in there, there's services, but a lot of this, a lot of people are spending a lot of money on internet access of various forms. So cost is an issue. Reliability. Um, you can see people texting on their phones and all the time or accessing web pages all the time. And if the internet is down, that gets people angry really fast. <laughs> so uh, reliability is, of course, always a concern. Feature velocity. So um, there are, uh, you know, the, if you think about security uh, as a trillion dollar industry, with hackers hacking in to all sorts of companies and trying to uh, steal stuff. Um, we, Cisco has some malware protection that can work on um, uh, uh, encrypted packets, because most malware is, uses encrypted packets nowadays. And it uses machine learning in order to figure out what to look at. And uh, you know, we, we block one billion uh, malware infestations a day. So, uh, you know, that is something that people might want to pay more for. Um, also, uh, performance uh, is al always an issue. Bandwidth demands continue to increase. 70% um, of all bandwidth today is video, and that's just going to increase, and video means more bits. So, here's the structure of the internet. Um, you've got the core, which is your main internet backbone. Um, you've got your aggregation. You think of the boxes in Comcast or, or whatever your service provider are that is interfacing with the internet backbone. And you've got the edge. And traditionally, the edge you know, con contains these boxes that can service 50,000 customers or more per box. And this is, uh, you know, I'll talk about later with DAA, is a combination of a box and a remote um, area in the service provider that then talks to um, uh, boxes on a pole outside your neighborhood. So here's the distributed access architecture. Instead of having one box where everything is in that one box, um, we're breaking everything apart into multiple boxes, into a network. Over here, you see uh, a cable modem that you might have in your house that provides your telephone access and your internet, wired internet access and your Wi-Fi access, uh, if it's a router. Your set-top box, which is your, uh, um, the, the device that interfaces with your television and gives you your video. Um, when, uh, for whatever channel you're watching. Um, the remote Phi is a box that translates from fiber into coaxial connectors that go into the house. There might be one remote Phi per 100 houses out there, and that's the device that's up on a pole. And then we're running fiber deep through this converged interconnect network of routers and switches. And then we have multiple boxes in the back end that are providing different services, like, for instance, a video data stream of you know, CNN or Fox News, you know, a hardware DOCSIS core, which is your cable box, providing cable uh, data internet for browsing the web, um, your cloud-native version of the same thing, 
which is a software version of this hardware box, or a video control core that processes things like channel changes or guide requests, um, and then, of course, the internet. So what we're doing by breaking everything apart is we can then reuse pieces of the system across different access technologies. So cable, um, uh, wireline, and mobile, for instance, are converging. So um, you, you know, your cell phone is going to use some of the same um, uh, technologies as your cable box at home. Um, and then uh, the other technologies are like DSL, um, PON, you know, there are a whole bunch of different technologies that are coming together in order to create this common infrastructure. So we have a common cloud data plane, a, a, a platform infrastructure for building cloud project products, feature development and open source development environment that is all um, providing consistency as well as lowering the cost of, uh, of, of creating these, these, this access infrastructure. So that le leads me to talking about cost. So you can think of if, if a service provider pays $1 on a box from Cisco, um, the vendor, and then pays $5 operating that box, if we can reduce that $5 to, uh, to $2 instead, we could charge uh, $2 for the box and charge, you know, um, and get $1 of extra revenue for Cisco. Um, the, the, the operator can return $1 to the subscriber, to the home user, and they can have $1 of extra profit. So how does that, how do we do that? We reduce the cost through an intuitive operator user interface, intent-based networking, orchestration, and automation. We can increase reliability by using containers which uh, enforce modularity and uh, uh, protect individual components of the code from each other. Um, and, uh, to, and limits the time and effects of outages in the system. We can limit the service group size um, and number of subs uh, service groups per box by pushing that fiber out as far as possible to the, to the home so that we have a smaller blast radius when a fault ha is encountered. And we can use continuous integration, continuous deployment development model in order to roll out bug fixes really fast into customer networks. And we can also use the idea of canaries, which is when you roll out effects, roll it out into a small area, test, is it working? If it's working, roll it out into a bigger area. If it doesn't, doesn't work, roll it back automatically. Feature velocity, we can achieve better modularity uh, and better testability, faster builds, faster development. Um, frequent releases ensure that customers get features and deploy them closer in time to when they're actually developed, which allows the development and the operations team in the service provider to become one team, um, which is the, the vision of DevOps. Um, CICD also provides an automated pipeline for pushing those updates from development into live networks. So this is an outline of the performance gains in, uh, over co coax, which is cable. Um, uh, historically, DOCSIS 2.0 has been out there. It's been the deployed technology. DOCSIS 3.0 is starting to become well deployed, uh, offering a gigabit per second. DOCSIS 3.1 is the new one that's been incremental deployment, um, which can offer at uh, up to 10 gig per second speeds, although five gigs per second is what you can buy in the store today. Um, deep fiber is uh, what we're just starting to roll out. Full duplex is on the drawing board. Um, extended frequency range is what we'll do after FDX. And there's even some theoretical research out there that shows that we can get to one terabit per second of speed over this 1980s coaxial technology. <laughs> so, uh, 
Any questions? So I'm, I'm fortunate to live in a neighborhood in San Francisco where I can get fiber directly to the home. Uh, yes. Uh, that symmetric service. And, and what I'm wondering is what you're talking about, and that actually is decoupled a lot of things, you're talking about coupling. And I'm wondering why we should go one way versus the other. So for instance, I basically get fiber from my provider. That's it. Right. I have uh, I have a Roku box, my TV, I have a smart TV, I have uh, a VoIP box for telephone service. And all of those people can then do some of the things you're describing, but they do them individually in a decoupled way. Um, how, how does that compare in terms of operational expense and cost to what you're describing? So um, Cisco is uh, is like Switzerland, where we're an equal equal uh, opportunity arms vendor, and uh, we 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 uh, we will provide um, the access technologies for FiOS as well as the access technologies for cable, and that access convergence I was talking about is being able to converge the back end in the service provider their their technologies. So it's just an internet. That's like, that's so, what I mean by so you're so you're only so like you're only using one portion of this picture, right. um, but uh, but one of the things is you know there are there is a drive to do over the top, which is just pay for internet access and then use Netflix or Hulu or or to whatever to and we, in order to get con in order to get content, and that's that's fine and you can come in at a lower price point on your internet service if you do that, um, that is. You know, that, you know, that, yes, that uses some of the infrastructure, the data infrastructure, mm -hmm. and, but it do, it's, it's not where service providers like Comcast will be able to monetize the most yeah. in terms of being able to offer more services. So. Where does, where does China fit into your vision of the future as a customer? And, and as a competitor? Um, well, China is, is using some of our technologies. Of course, Huawei is big in China, but we have our own um, Chinese development center at, at Cisco that does a lot of our development. And because you know, China views us as local boys, um, that market is open to us. And we do sell into China. So. Um, as a competitor, I think Huawei tends to be lower priced than Cisco, um, but they also, there, there are also concerns around the world, you know, uh, various geopolitical concerns around security that ver various other countries have had. Um, but, but uh, you know, and, and so we've, we, you know, Cisco has been able to benefit from some of that. Yes. Yeah, so you, you mentioned uh, sort of converging more technologies for cable and uh, cell. Um, one of the issues with cell, of course, is just the high latency. So the bandwidth is nice, but the latency right. is, is the real issue. To what extent is that right now on the back end, and to what extent is that the actual wireless base? So the big transition that's happening in mobile right now is 5G in terms of development. Um, that's like a five-year development plan to completely roll out 5G. And the 5G networks are gonna be built from the ground up for video. So it, the idea is that the internet, you know, since 70% of the traffic is video anyway, the internet becomes a video content di distribution system. And viewed that way, they write the specs, the 5G specs, in order to optimize video performance. Any other questions? Okay.